Welcome back. Our next story has been two decades in the making. That is how long we've been waiting to interview Philomene Hoban. These days, she prefers to be called Sister Aroha. She's a Catholic nun, the first Kiwi to join Mother Teresa's order. For decades, she's cared for sick and vulnerable children unwanted by their own parents. Cameras have never been allowed inside Sister Aroha's orphanage until now. Jahan Kasanada travelled to Sri Lanka for a look inside her extraordinary world. They're the kind of smiles that can melt hearts. There are children that are very lovable and there are some children that are very naughty. But these faces don't tell the whole story. They've been abandoned by their parents. They have been abandoned in the hospital, they've been abandoned on the road or the mothers just cannot cope. When a child is abandoned, they want to know if somebody is there. And that's you? Yeah, that is us, yeah. In an orphanage on the outskirts of Colombo, ah, a Kiwi is reaching out to children unwanted by their families. They need love. Without love, they will not survive. But love isn't just found in her work, it's also in her name, Sister Aroha. Aroha means love, our work is love, isn't it? We, we will be judged on love one day. She has spent three decades in Sri Lanka, far from her own family in North Canterbury. The life she has chosen is extraordinary. I certainly couldn't do it. She's making an enormous difference, and I mean, we're proud of what she's doing. But there are certainly times when I wish that she was here. At 75, most of us will be enjoying our sunset years. But for Sister Aroha, working 16 hours a day is pretty normal. A lot of washing. A lot of washing. Every morning there are 60 sets of sheets to wash uh -huh. and just as many oh, tiny yeah. mouths to feed. You have to give them the love and the care that a child should have. But her life hasn't always been this way. Before she was Sister yeah. Aroha, she was Philomene Hoban, a farm girl in Culverdon. She was a very sociable, competent young woman. Judith is Philomene's sister-in-law. I mean, she loved life, she enjoyed people's company, she was a great sportswoman and in her 20s, a great school teacher. From the reports we've had, the kids adored her. We probably just all thought Phil would get married one day and that was it. But life took a different turn when Philomene went travelling. In Asia, she saw poverty up close. I questioned why I have so much and there are people in the world who have nothing. I have always had this feeling that I would like to be with the poor and to serve the poor. At 35, she dropped a bombshell on her staunchly Catholic family. She decided to become a nun. For me, that came as a huge shock, really. I didn't anticipate that at all. She loved entertaining. She's a fabulous cook. And all of that just went. For her parents especially, that was really tough. But they're people of extraordinarily deep faith. Her parents would say, well, if this is what Philomene wants, then that's fine. We will support her in it. Philomene was accepted as a missionary of charity. In this early interview, she describes her decision. It was just a, a really deep conviction within me that this is something I just have to try. Otherwise, I'll have no peace in my life. Everybody else thought I was crazy, but I just walked out and left everything. Did you think about what you were giving up? I didn't really think about it, no. I just knew I had to go, so I went. The Catholic Order sent her 10,000 kilometres away to Sri Lanka. Did you have any idea what it was like over there? We only knew that that's where tea came from, <laughs> and we didn't really know much else. Her new home behind the gates of this orphanage with seven other nuns. Um. This is the first time cameras have been allowed inside to capture their lives of devotion and sacrifice. You have no computer. No computers. No TV. 
No TV. No radio? No radio. No newspaper either. Oh God Almighty Father. She owns just three identical saris, a Bible and a prayer book. But most precious of all is her set of vows. We have a vow of poverty, a vow of chastity, a vow of obedience, and a vow of wholehearted and free service. They are our positions. He will be gracious to you when he hears you cry. Her accent has really changed, hasn't it? Oh, the accent's dreadful. <laughs> it's become a mixture of all sorts of things. Yes, yes, I no longer have a New Zealand accent. My mother was very sad to hear that my accent gone. But language has never got in the way of service. Hey, Masha. Hello, Kenda. Some of the kids she cares for are seriously ill. Ah, nidi matai. Udi ganda, ha? Even close to death. They are completely dependent on us for everything. We know some children are not going to live, and we give them all the love and care that we can, like in the waiting room for heaven. Diduli. Ah, Barigini. Diduli has cerebral palsy. How does society see these children? Many of the parents will reject them completely. Huh? They don't see it as a sickness. They see that someone's put a curse on them. When they're born, they just leave them in the hospital. When they brought her, they said she would live maybe only one month. But uh, it's now three years, so she's doing OK. She's continuing the work of the late Mother Teresa, the founder of this orphanage. I just never thought I'd meet Mother Teresa in my life, and there, there she is sitting down having breakfast with me. I didn't know what to do. Just to see her in action with the poor, there's a really incredible person. We try to be what Mother wants us to be. Following that example requires faith. Even on a trip to the local market, we're not buying meat today. Being a nun is a frugal business. We will not accept regular income. We will not accept the government grants. We will not accept any church grants. Instead, they rely solely on donations and goodwill. We are completely dependent on divine providence. God is there, and he's never let us down. The nuns choose to live in poverty, sharing the burdens of the people they serve. What does poverty do to a person? It demoralizes them completely. They don't have a proper house to live in, they don't have proper food to eat, they don't have proper work to go to. Every Saturday she welcomes and feeds them, regardless of their religion or race. When you meet them in the street, they greet you like a long lost friend. Are there times you wish that you could do more? It's not always possible to do more, is it? What you can do at that time, we do. Good morning, good morning. Sister Aroha is deeply respected by the locals. Subaya Thea Garaja is a jeweler and one of her biggest supporters. She's an extraordinary person and one of the best examples of uh, Mother Teresa's work. He knows that having spent time with the saint. Do you see anything of Mother Teresa in Sister Araha? Quite a lot. She's another version of Mother Teresa. Whatever Mother Teresa had is in her. But her life of sacrifice and service can't go on forever. Up next, securing a future for the kids in the orphanage. She's going for adoption this month. And a stunning surprise. We deliver Mother Teresa's final words for Sister Aroha's family. I never saw it before. You've never seen this before? No. Culverden, North Canterbury. For Pat Hoban, life on this farm is the only life he's ever known. But there's a hole in his tight-knit family. Pat's sister Philomene is serving the poor on the other side of the world. I think it's amazing work that she's doing. It requires somebody with pretty special skills. We're well actually very proud of what she was wanting to do, yeah. Sister Aroha, as she's now known, has stayed in Sri Lanka through monsoons, a tsunami 
and years of civil war. Were you worried about her safety? Yes, we were. The nuns are very visible and there are well-documented cases of the missionaries of charity being killed in other parts of the world. The Hobans only see Sister Aroha once every 10 years when she's allowed to come home for a visit. The first time I remember her in person was when I was 13. She made a huge impact on me. These pictures from the early 90s capturing that very moment. She never felt like a stranger. She came back into the house as though she'd been here a week ago. She relaxed, she enjoyed our food. She's wearing that beautiful sari, and that creates a kind of presence. Saying goodbye was tough. She leaves such an impression on people that meet her. Why are you crying? She's ordinary, um, considerate. But more than anything, she sees the fun in everything. Oh, your bags check right the way through to club, though. Ah, thank you. She lived the same as I've lived. You know, she went to university, she had a career, she enjoyed the farm. And then her life went one way, my life went the other. Kate's the only member of her family who's visited Sister Aroha in Sri Lanka. Do you miss your old life in North Canterbury? I would miss this life, but I would not miss that life now. Her only regret, not getting to see her great nieces and nephews grow up. Hi, Andy Bell. <laughs> oh, they're gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. They grow so fast and they change so fast. What do you think when you think about the, the Kiwi lifestyle compared to what the children have here? Yeah, yeah, they just, they're miles apart, aren't they? Our kids just don't have even one hundredth of what they have. I often think if I could only take these children for one day just to run on the grass. But they don't have that joy. And they've never had the joy of, of love from their parents. These kids are well cared for, but this orphanage can't be their home forever. We will do all we can to search for their mother or whoever abandoned them. If it's safe, some kids are returned to their families. Boy or girl? Boy. Boy. But we don't have birth certificates. For others, Sister Aroha tries to find new homes. She's going for adoption this month. Battling bookwork and bureaucracy all the way. In the time that Sister Aroha has worked in this orphanage, almost 2,000 children have passed through these walls. She's helped many of them to be adopted by Sri Lankan families who can give them a chance at the life they deserve. Oh, we're happy that the child is going for adoption, but still the tears will roll when we see the child going because the child has become part of our life. So naturally we are sad. Some have grown up and started new lives all around the world. Many come back to visit. They're very happy. They open up like a flower a little bit each day. It is so nice to see. From the outside, Sister Aroha's faith seems rock solid. But 40 years of hard work and heartache have put it to the test. Are there times you've doubted God? Yeah, yeah everybody has to doubt their faith a little bit at times, but not to the point that I would think of packing up and going. When times get tough, she thinks about the saint who inspired her to choose this life. Mother Teresa was able to reach from the other side of the world to this teacher in New Zealand and say, I have something special here for you to do, come and help me. But there's one of Mother Teresa's final acts that Sister Aroha doesn't know about. Sister, do you recognise this? Mm -hmm. Oh God, how you got that? Decades ago, Mother Teresa wrote a letter to Sister Aroha's mum, Margaret Hoban. Dear mother of Sister Aroha, thank you for giving your child to God. She is a gift of God to us all. God bless you. Mother Teresa. Yeah, yeah, very lucky. I never saw it before. You've never seen this before? No. For her to have taken the moments to pen a personal message was pretty special. What do you think it would have been like for your mother to receive this? Oh, she would have been very happy, huh? 
and Mrs Hoban treasured it, always. It was very special to her. A lot of people say that there is a lot of Mother Teresa in you. <laughs> Not like Mother Teresa. <laughs> Sri Lanka is the place Sister Aroha calls home, and it will always be. How long can you keep doing this? We will do until I die, finished. And somebody said, so what are you going to do when you get old, Phil? And she just said, oh, just keep working. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having us to visit. Thank you very much for coming, huh? May God bless you all. Isn't she lovely? Now, we'd like to thank the Asian New Zealand Foundation for helping us to report from Sri Lanka. Also, we'd like to acknowledge the footage of Sister Aroha that was uh, shot during her visit here in the 1990s. That was from TVNZ cameraman Ron Madden and Mike Fitzgerald.